One of the most common complaints we've had lately in farming is Roundup costs have really gone up. Not only the chemical, but the what used to be called the tech fee, or in other words, how much it costs you to plant a bag of Roundup seed. Well, that's one thing. The other side of it is there's a lot of tolerant weeds to Roundup anymore, so we're using higher rates of Roundup than we did just a few years ago. So farmers are thinking, man, did it used to be this bad? Should I go back to conventional beans or is there another option that I could do in soybeans where I could use a non-selective herbicide? Yep, there are a couple of options now. Instead of Roundup beans, a farmer can plant conventional beans and believe it or not, there are actually quite a few conventional beans out there. There are also Liberty soybeans. Liberty has finally been approved in many of the countries that we export soybeans to. So Bayer has decided to release Liberty soybeans and they should be a few dollars a bag or a few dollars an acre cheaper than a Roundup program next year. Oh, but we've gotten spoiled. We've been using Roundup Ready soybeans for a number of years now, and you know what? I want to go fishing this week, so I'm not going to make it out to the field and get it sprayed, but those weeds, I'll be able to kill them with Roundup even if they get a little bit bigger. This may not be the case with conventional and Liberty Link well, soybeans. Well, it will not be the case with <laughs> conventional Liberty beans. Here's the thing. We've just told any agronomist that we ever talk to, look, if you want to have a farmer go Liberty Beans or especially conventional beans, it is absolutely mandatory that you put two pre-emerge herbicides down. If you're just going to put one pre-emerge herbicide down or no pre's down, you need to completely forget about conventional beans and Liberty Beans. Don't even think about it. You have to go Roundup if you don't want to put two pre-emerge herbicides down. Well, you have to think about what you're coming back with post and in conventional or Liberty Beans, you're not coming back with Roundup that's going to take virtually every wheat. You're coming back in conventional beans with probably a mixture of a couple of different things. Neither one of them is going to get every wheat out in your field. So you've got to have really good help early. With Liberty Beans, it's kind of the same thing. Now, I'm not saying Liberty is a bad product. It just doesn't have quite the flexibility that Roundup does. There are a couple of weeds that it's not as strong on, especially some of the grass weeds like yellow foxtail or field sandbur. But also on the broadleaf side, you can't get uh, three foot tall weeds with a, a normal Normal rate of Liberty or Ignite. So what we want you to do if you're going to raise conventional beans or Liberty beans is again put down two pre-emerge herbicides. So basically we're talking about one of two classes here. We want you to use a yellow, a Treflan, Sonalan, or Prowl down to get the grass. And those products also have some activity on broadleaves. Now there are a couple other products you could use that are way more expensive like Dual and Outlook that are labeled in soybeans, but like I say, when they cost probably double what Treflan, Sonline, and Prowl do. For roughly the same weed control. Well, not even isn't, isn't as a good. Whole, isn't no. a whole lot of difference on the grass side. I, I, on the broadleaf side, I'd agree with you. You get a little uh, bit more activity out of Treflan I, and Sonline I still especially. Think, I still think Treflan, Sonline, and Prowl are better than Dual and Outlook in terms of grass control. I really do. Well, you're going to get 95 to 100 percent grass control out of any of those products used at the right rate, but for a lot lower cost using one of the yellows than one of the corn prees, as I would call them, dual and outlook. Now the other side of the equation besides grass is broadleaf weeds. And there are a lot of tough broadleaves, especially the small seeded broadleaves, things like lamb's quarters and pigweed, for example, and water hemp. Those types of weeds you can take care of before they even come out of the ground if you put the right pre down. So there are a few different choices that you'll need to add with those yellows to take care of the broadleaves. One of the most popular broadleaf herbicides, so in this group two or category two of pre emerge herbicides, has been Valor, Sencor, Pursuit. Python, Authority, Authority Assist. There are a host of different products. It just really depends on what your worst weeds are. So here's what I would do if I was you. I would go into my agronomist and say, or, or your chemical dealer, and just say, look, I want to raise conventional beans. I know I need to use Treflan, Sonaline, or Prowl, and I have these two or three weeds that are my worst broadleaf weeds, what broadleaf herbicide do you think I should put together with my Treflan Sonline? And it may be different weeds in different fields. You've got to remember back in the conventional days we had to talk field by field and say look these are the main weeds in this particular field, these are the main weeds in this particular field. And I remember how things went because we'd ask farmers well what weeds do you have and they'd say I have everything. Well, you probably do have one or two of everything, but what are the main weeds? And if you say, well, you know what? I have to get lamb's quarter under control in this field or it's a disaster. That's good to know. Or I have to get cockleburr under control or it's a disaster. And then we can mix and match products to do a good job. Now, I mentioned cockleburr and the reason that I did is cockleburr is a large seeded broadleaf. When we're talking about this combination of pre-products, 
you're not going to do a very good job on many of the large seeded broadleaves. For example, cockleburr can germinate about six inches deep in the soil. And there's no pre that you're going to work into the ground in the top few inches and be able to have a strong enough concentration to kill every cockleburr that's going to emerge in that field. So we have to be realistic with expectations. We're going to do a pretty good job on small seeded broadleaves. We're going to do a very good job on grass. And then we're going to have to clean up the rest in the crop. Now here's why we're talking about this Liberty and conventional bean thing today. Not only are a lot of people kind of upset that the average Roundup Ready soybean price today is already $40 a bag. What people are concerned about is, okay, three years from now, the old Roundup Ready trait's gonna be gone. All it's gonna be is Roundup Ready 2, and the Roundup Ready 2 beans that are selling now are in the $50 range or more. So a lot of guys will say, oh my goodness, am I gonna have to spend 50 or $55 a bag for Roundup beans? How about if I buy some conventional beans for $17 or $20 a bag? That seems like a pretty good option. So I think in the future, there's gonna be a lot more talk about this conventional soybean thing and Liberty soybean thing, just because the Roundup Ready 2 beans are that much higher priced than the old Roundup beans. Well, it's not just Monsanto and Roundup Ready 2. There are other companies coming with Roundup Ready traits as well. And with their new beans, they're moving them up into that $50 to maybe $60 price range per unit of seed. So don't be thinking, well, it's, it's only Monsanto that's doing this. The other companies are doing the exact same thing. Yep, good point. So once again, we want you to at least think about conventional and Liberty soybeans on your farm. And if you do, you absolutely have to put down two pre-emerge herbicides and then follow post-emerge with whatever you need to clean up any other weeds. Well, one of those weeds may be our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed?